The President shall through Connacht's intervention in the Fakoland saga has taken a disturbing direction with fears that heavy herds will rule. Meantime, the self-defenders who self-proclaimed defenders of the Bakwari ancestral land have said that they are determined to work with Connacht to see that uh, fraudulent traditional rulers, administrators and elites of uh, FACO are fished out and squarely punished. Meantime, the land saga, an issue of the FACO division, has contaminated several parts of the Republic of Cameroon. In this edition of the news, we shall be taking you from the FACO to several parts in the littoral region, in the west region, and other parts where people are rising up, rising in high numbers to say that they are against the fraudulent sale of the alliance. These are the top stories. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining Equinox Television. We are on our primetime newscast live from our central news desk in Douala, Cameroon's economic capital city. It is 6 p.m. in Douala, Cameroon, the same time in Abuja in the neighboring Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria. We begin with information from Douala Land Matters to say that over 500 families are at the verge of being evicted from a piece of land where they have been occupying for several years in Yasa, a neighborhood in the Douala 3 subdivision. Brothers, sisters, and parents say they are being unjustly sent away by their, from their land by some individuals who, according to them, fraudulently bought their lands. Inno Senase tells us more in the following report. Birth of a new land scandal in Douala. About 500 families in Boko City, Yasa, a baby quarter created in the Douala 3 subdivision, are out of their homes to protect the over 15 hectares of land they have settled on for at least 36 years for pioneer settlers from threats of taking it back by some relatives of their deceased landlord who vowed to evict them. The flop for years, so. Every family you see here has a land document issued by the deceased seller, brother to his sisters and brothers, who are now threatening us to reclaim the land we have bought. We understand, so since long, we will buy this land, even me, self, self. They don't, don't worry, so they pass me, I go out and say. Since we bought the land, they keep visiting us, they need us to eat from the transaction. Our refusal is reason why they hired demolition agents and some security elements in their numbers to demolish our houses, even at night. Today we don't talk, say, we will go meet a show place where they don't make, where they don't be has all plans on things. They go now, now for different land, they go show. Uh, According to the threatened locals and chief of Yasa, defending the occupants, their landlords of blessed memory, Dipoko Eboko Daniel, had always put dialogue and peace first before other matters. In 2008, when I dropped a demand for a land document, and the day we descended to the sides to demarcate the boundaries, the late landlord who sold the land told all his brothers to voice out any worry they had, but no one did. What is happening today has been described by them as theft. Land and house, no na mango. Something they will take and put them for inside pocket. They receive something where it shines so, but they recover them. Local administrative authorities have been informed of this new wave of land disputes for justice. On May 14, 2009, a delegation from the Ministry of State Property, Surveys and Land Tenure descended to the site for findings. Twelve years after, a new committee returns to the site due to inappropriate application of resolutions taken by the first. Resolutions of the second commission that came to Douala from Yaoundé and held a series of exchanges with both conflicting parties in the presence of the chief of Yasa are still awaited. 
Innocent has a reporting on the protests on land-related issues in Douala, Cameroon's economic capital city. As we promised, we take you to the West region, where one of the major uh, problems that is causing insecurity and high tensions in the known division of that region is uh, that of uh, the dispute on uh, lands within the west or the left bank of the Noon River in the Noon Division. The people in that locality say they are being constant, constantly attacked by individuals, individuals who claim to be rightful owners of uh, the lands wherein they have been for several years. Charles Ekome tells us more in the following report. The left banks of the River Noon in the west region of Cameroon has become a zone of altercation between inhabitants of the locality and those of Fumbot. There are increasing tensions with people living from Fumbot coming to impose laws in the locality. At about 8 a.m., two men came towards us armed with matchets. They warned us to stay away from the zone. I got to the farm waiting to cultivate maize. All of a sudden, two men threatened me and told me to leave my farm. They said it was their land and it belonged to their ancestors. I immediately reacted and told the men that the house next to the farm belonged to my ancestors and this piece of land belongs to me. I gave birth to all my children here. I have spent 48 years in this place. The villages in this territory have been existing for more than a century, harboring over 7,000 villagers who rely solely on agriculture for a living. But recently, they have been constantly threatened by individuals who say these lands belong to their ancestors. We just got back from work and noticed that our houses have been destroyed and items were taken from them. One of them addressed me and his brother asked him, don't you know her? She lives here. And he ferociously answered me, take your affairs and leave these premises and never return because if you do, it's the machete that will resolve the problem. They have been assaulting women and even going to the extent of raping them. They have broken down homes. They come early in the morning aboard motorcycles and in the evenings they are spotted returning from raiding homes with luggages which doesn't belong to them. Upon arrival at the Momo village, which is one of the principal villages at the left banks of the river Noon, the traditional council has decided to look into the problem of these villagers who are constantly being assaulted and threatened. They believe security and defense forces should come to the aid of the people. But most at times, this quest is futile and in vain. We were moving a few meters away when we saw some people coming out from the bushes with arms. They threatened us and said, Madam, where are you guys going to? We lied to protect ourselves by saying we are going to visit one of our sisters. They robbed us and took away my phone and the sum of 12,500 francs CFA. After this act, I went to report to the gendarmes, but they instead told me to go and see the divisional officer. I responded, what does the divisional officer has to do with security? This issue was also addressed by the Sultan of Fumban, who wrote in a communique that he doesn't recognize these unknown individuals causing problems. The population also solicited the action of the governor of the West region by peacefully protesting in the regional capital, Bafusam. We are worried, we are devastated, and we are asking the governor of the West region to intervene. This past Monday, the market square at the Mumu village was transformed into some sort of a court hearing presided by the senior divisional officer, Donatien Um, who was instructed by the governor of the West region our Fonka Augustin to initiate the procedure. People will go on the quest for life, but they need to respect the system which has been put in place. They need to know that there is a procedure to follow which is harmonized for everyone. 
I urge you people to conform to these laws and not disrupt them. Similar acts like these didn't start today in the West region. It should be recalled that in 2011, the governor at the time, Samuel Ivaha Diboa, held a meeting to resolve conflicts. In 2013, these conflicts led to the death of many people in the region. After some years of peace, this same scenario resurfaces. Hopefully, this time, it should be buried for good. We are on a series of land sagas in Cameroon and we take you to Pondemum. Pondemum is a locality in Kutaba subdivision, still in the known division of the West region of Cameroon, where the people are accusing the deputy to the Sultan of the Bamon Kingdom of forcefully taking and selling their land. They say the land belonged to their forefathers and they have been on that land for several years. But recently, the deputy to the Sultan moved in with his uh, supporters and claiming that the land belongs to him. Details with Immaculate Fogwe. Land disputes continue to cause havoc in several parts of Cameroon. A case in point is the Pondimum village in Kutaba, non division West Region. The population are accusing His Royal Highness Gampayu Inusa, who is the first deputy of the Sultan of Bamun, of seizing civil portions of their land and later selling them at exorbitant prices. The villagers claim the land being sold belongs to their great grandparents who are suffering with leprosy. When leprosy was diagnosed in Kutaba several years ago, the Sultan at the time decided to offer this piece of land in Pondimum to leprosy patients. Our grandparents are dead and we inherited the land from them. Now portions of the land are being sold by the first deputy of the Sultan without our consent. They are chasing us from this piece of land given to us by our grandparents. We are not even given the right to cultivate on it. Some persons have even begun constructing their houses. We are not happy with our Sultan who gave the go-ahead. An accusation denied by the first deputy of the Sultan. According to him, the disputed portion of land belongs to his late father. Is there any family that can deny that this piece of land belongs to my father? The chief of Pondimum has gathered some youths in the village to protest against something which does not concern them. The chief of has equally been renting several portions of land to villagers. When I noticed, I asked him to stop, but he continued. Both parties plan taking the case to court while the final verdict will be passed by the presiding judge. And it all started in Buya, chief town of the southwest region of Cameroon, where the presidency through a conduct, that is the anti-corruption commission in Cameroon, summoned occupants of some 14 portions of land at the government's residential area of uh, Buya to go to Yaoundi and justify how they acquired the land. It came after repeated reports that the lands were wrongfully or fraudulently bought by individuals currently occupying the portions of the land. And a safe proclaimed defender of the Bakuri ancestral land on his part says the, the, the move uh, the Wahala has taken a disturbing turn. They are determined to give Konak the necessary information to be able to fish out fraudulent traditional rulers, administrators and elites of the FACO responsible for what they call is a FACO land saga. Take a listen to Barista Ikumengongi in the following extract. We, we face, as a people, we face extinction. A people who do not have land, do not exist. I would like my children and my grandchildren to be proud to come around and say, look at my great-grandfather's land in Bonakanda, in Bulu, in, uh, in, in Bukwango, in Basa, in Mapanja. But if all of this land is occupied by strangers and not Fako people, what would they say they own? How would they define themselves? They would define themselves that they own land where? In America? America is not their home. England is not their home. France is not their home. 
They are defined as Fako people because of the land they occupy. People in Kambe or Banso or, or Nkwen are defined by the land they occupy. People in Ebolova and Betoa and Vomeka and, uh, and Bafia, all they are defined by the land, the, the space they occupy. And this space, we occupy them. It's God who put us there. Why should some people think that we should, we should be removed from our land? Ngonki, why it seems like he is the only one so concerned about the issue of uh, the FACO division and land saga and intending to know from him if it really mattered or was an issue as he is pushing it to be. And this is what he had to say. Somehow the issue about land also is a political issue. And many of our so-called elites who should be talking about this matter are all big wigs in CPDM. And I understand that within CPDM they have something they call party discipline where people are not supposed to criticize the misdeeds of government, even if it's hurting them. That is the result of what we are seeing today. If our so-called elites have been talking about this and acting on it for the past 10, 20 years, we would not have gotten to this point. But happily, the government has seen that we have a point in this fight. In recognition of that, the presidency has awakened Konak to start these investigations, which has raised a lot of eyebrows today. The kind of stealing that is going on now is the covert kind of stealing. You see, when uh, I, I take somebody who is not supposed to be a chief of a village and I make him a chief, and I tell him, look, because I made you a chief and you have access to 50 hectares of land, you must give me 10 hectares. That is stealing. How is that? That's what the administrators do with some of these chiefs who are not real chiefs. That's what they do, and that's what they have been doing. And that's why today in FACO, when people want to become chiefs, it's because they want to get land which they will sell. That, there's a direct connection between chieftaincy and land grabbing in FACO today. We need to break that, that, that cycle. We need to stop it. Barista Ikomengongi speaking there. And now we talk COVID-19 before we continue with other news elements here to say that the Ministry of Public Health says uh, Cameroon as of now has confirmed uh, 61,731 COVID-19 cases and with some 56,000, uh, that is 56, over 56,000 transmissions already recorded, active cases 3,888. And the government sees the rate of uh, those who have been healed so far stands at 92 in Cameroon, while uh, the rate of uh, that is the situation, however, remains uh, preoccupying. According to the latest information published by Cameroon's Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manahuda Malashi, and who sees some 385 persons at, uh, on oxygen indicating that COVID-19 is a major preoccupation of the minister at the end of that uh, uh, public information on his uh, official uh, Twitter handle called on the people of Cameroon to continue to respect anti-COVID-19 measures prescribed by the government and also indicated that plans were on to uh, see uh, the decision that Cameroon or the trend that Cameroon would take vis-a-vis uh, vaccines for the coronavirus pandemic. We shall be coming back to that in subsequent editions of information on Equinox uh, Radio and Television. And now we talk something else. The uh, mortal remains of Cameroon's industrialist, uh, Monkam uh, Pascal, and to say that it has arrived uh, Duala following the death of the business uh, Mugu Pascal Monkam on the 27th of February. In uh, South Africa, the mortal remains of his uh, this business icon in Cameroon landed today at the Douala Military uh, Airport. A, a prayer session was conducted at the military base to honor the man who contributed enormously to the growth of Cameroon's economy. Military honors were also awarded or performed to the deceased in the presence of the governor of the Littoral region, Samuel Jodone Ivaha Dibwa, who acknowledged the fact that Pascal Moncam was a great industrialist, a patron, and an economist who contributed uh, positively uh, to the growth of Cameroon's economy and also uh, saw the employment of several young Cameroonians and um, also said that th that it was why the head of state president Pobia decreed an official funeral service in his honor. He uh, also indicated that the family should 
stay on uh, that is uh, not worried and to know that the government of Cameroon is uh, with them uh, we also uh, gave our microphone or oh, that is a uh, question the governor of the lead region who even after uh, speaking or expressing the official message of the president of the republic of cameroon expressed his feelings on the microphone of equinox television i can say that uh, it's a special man who is going like this i knew him when i was a senior junior officer of open cam division and i saw how he was working and I uh, can say we are losing somebody who was very powerful for all. There was no discrimination at his level, no tribalism. He is the one who helped those who are coming to him. I'm just appealing all the members of this family, of Monkham family, to behave as one man and to keep this uh, 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 option that he has taken to see after his death the people have to be together and they have to to work hand in hand so that uh, this uh, uh, wealth that he has uh, built could just uh, let me say la uh, last and everybody has to see that uh, he was not only working for himself, but he wanted the family to be very strong. And we are grateful for what he has done. And uh, well, the mortal remains of the industrialists should be recalled that they will be wakekeep at his uh, Pascal Monkamp residence in the economic capital city, Douala. Tomorrow will be the departure of his mortal remains from uh, the economic capital city, Douala, to Bakasa, his native village in the open camp division of the west region of Cameroon, where he will be buried on Saturday, the 10th of April, 2021. It should be recalled that Pascal Monkam died at the age of 92 and he was uh, the owner of a chain, or a chain of uh, five La Falaise hotels in Cameroon and South Africa. And we stay on uh, related news that is to death of uh, icons in Cameroon to say that emotions are still high within the Catholic family in Cameroon following the passing away of Christian Cardinal Tumi, the Archbishop of the Douala Metropolitan Archdiocese, Samuel Cleda, in an official statement, indicated or invited friends and acquaintances of the late Cat cardinal to come and uh, bid farewell to the uh, cardinal in religious uh, ways on the uh, 19th of uh, this month of april 2021 it is contained in a release signed by the archbishop of the Douala metropolitan archdiocese it is found on social media but the news of the passing away of uh, the cardinal did not also leave inhabitants of the city of limbe in the Fakut division indifferent they cried out and said Cameroon has actually lost somebody who was not only determined to see the spiritual lives of Cameroonians change, but was also determined to see peace reigning in all parts of the country. David Sinema tells us more from Limbi. The news of the demise of Cameroon lone cardinal, Archbishop Emeritus of the Douala Metropolitan Archdiocese, Christian Cardinal Wingand Tumi, was received in the seaside resort city of Limbe with mixed feelings. I'm the parish pastor of Presbyterian Church Beach Limbe and also the Presbyterian Secretary for Fakul South Presbytery. News of the demise of the Archbishop retired Christian Cardinal Tumi reached us and we developed a lot of tears and pain. Mr. Majesty John Manga Williams, the Paramount Chief Designate of Victoria Limbe, will say that it came to me as a shock. Even though uh, at his age we expect anything like that to happen, nobody wanted him out of the scene so soon. Reverend Ewule John from Ebenezer Baptist Church and the senior pastor, when I got this information, I was like, that who is going to be a spokesman again when it comes to the voice of the church? 
I'm Reverend Father Lungla Anselm, the present parish priest of uh, the Our Lady of Lourdes Parish Gardens in Limbe. The news of the death of the Cardinal was, should I just say, was such a shock to me. Well, I'm Chief Zaki Zongandembo, the uh, publisher of Eden Newspaper, the director of Eden Radio. The death to me, the people's cardinal uh, reached us, uh, reached me with a lot of shock. His role in the ongoing Anglophone armed conflict for a peaceful and just society shall forever be remembered. Prelate was one voice that we continued to listen to at this very trying moment. He stood for the truth, he took everybody to be a child of God. And uh, you know, he was somebody who welcomed everybody. Freedom fighter for the crisis in the northwest and the southwest, the person who stands for the truth, the one who makes sure that he harness uh, peace to reign. He was a real citizen of this country, the one who was an epitome of truth, of equality, of peace and justice in this country and that role will live on because his ideas will be picked up by subsequent leaders. The people see, though a Roman Catholic, the late Cardinal was that man who cut across denominational barriers. What I found in him was that he was not selective. He accepted Roman Catholic Christian or no, no Roman Catholic Christian. He was one of those who preached Christianity and not churchianity. He was much more interested in the living word of God and not what a particular church says. He was not only the cardinal of the Catholic, but he was a, a man of God who cut across to all the denominations in Cameroon. And interact with uh, everybody who had something to offer, especially as far as religion is concerned. His ideals in life, many say, inspired them. Uh, I remember one point, he, he, you know, they gave him an envelope or gave him money. He would not even know what is there. He was so detached. And I think that is what we have to learn. I also have to learn to be as detached as, as he was, you know, to uh, pay so much attention to all these worldly things that sometimes they even trap us. He was one of those who spoke the truth and nothing but the truth. He stood for the truth. He inspired me a lot. And that's one of the ideals of a pastor which I stand for. His messages were so inspiring that whenever he preaches, he speaks with authority and with wisdom. The death of the prelate is said to be a great loss to Cameroon. I think he's somebody that we miss. And I think he's somebody, if we're true to ourselves, we should not pretend now. What he stood for, I think we should continue in that line. A lot will miss him. When I heard of his death, I thought, oh well, it is time. There is time for everything. He has done his part. Leaving us to glory is a big, big uh, gap for the church. It's a big loss for all of us, for the country. Christian Cardinal Wingant Tumi must have passed on to glory, but his memories shall forever live on. When we pick up all the lessons he taught us, political lessons of justice and peace, spiritual lessons of humility, hard work, and common service to all, simplicity, we will see him still living on in Cameroon and beyond. Coming up is Talking Points. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. Thanks for joining us on Talking Points. We are receiving a journalist. We are receiving Prince Joel Mukage. Prince Joel Mukage, thanks for accepting our invitation. Good evening to you, my brother. For me, I'm Sean Sander. Good evening to the peace-loving people of Donga Madun subdivision. And special good evening to Honorable Ngala Gerard. I'm Prince Joel Mukage. We have watched a series of reports people rising to say that our lands are being forcefully taken away, our lands are, are being threatened, or the rights to the, our ancestral lands are being threatened by powerful individuals. 
the question that comes to the minds of every Cameroonians, every Cameroonian is why now? Yes. I mean, it's a key question that most Cameroonians are asking. Why now? No, the, the, the issue is the land of uh, the, the issue of land seizure is an old story because uh, we have a majority of our funds and traditional rulers who seize lands from persons and feel that they can give to certain individuals. But many of them they work very closely to the local administrators, that's the DUs and the SDUs, and we feel that. Uh, it is something that should be condemned. It's a very important issue that you brought it up because traditional rulers today, they, they, they just take lands from people and like I said, it's not something that is today, it's something that is very historical. Yeah, historical. Yeah, you are an investigative journalist. That's why I asked you that question. And you rightly put it that it's not, the, uh, it's, it's not something that is just starting. We've been experiencing that in Cameroon as in why, what is happening? Why are the people rising up just now, starting with the Fakulan saga, and we've had reports from the literal to the west region of Cameroon, people are beginning to speak up. Is there something cooking at the Ministry of uh, Survey, Land Tenure and State Property, for example? Uh, I, will, I will not authoritatively say yes, but I feel that uh, there is something that is not going on well. The issue of uh, land expropriation in Cameroon is not a new story. Traditional rulers, chiefs, and other ministers, as well as uh, divisional officers, because they work hand in glove. You cannot take somebody's land, because when you take the land, the person will want to run to the nearest police station, or maybe run to the nearest divisional office. But when they go there, they cannot actually explain their grievances, because it is a kind of a chain. I've done investigations, like you said. I've done inve investigations on this land uh, issue. It, it's something of a chain. The chief works with the duo. The duo is the boss of the commissioner. So when once they take your land, to an extent you're frustrated. You don't know where you go to. You can go to because the chief assists your land, sells it to for me. I'm from Sanda, and then you feel that okay, you can go to the the, the commissioner, and then when you go to the commissioner, the commissioner frustrates you and you feel that you should go to the deal, the deal to his sons who are tied, because many a time, traditional rulers are those who have, they are custodians of the tradition. So it's not an issue of individuals, uh, Mr. Armstrong. We should be able to say this, because it is not individuals who take lands. It is chiefs who take lands from people. Now, when these chiefs take lands, they work, it is a whole chain, because in one of my investigations, I discovered it's a whole chain. There is an issue of the chief, the commissioner, and the duo. Because when you take my land, I should go and cry somewhere that my land has been taken. Now we start from those who are very close to the people. We're talking about traditional rulers, custodians of the traditions, the customs of the people, their cultures. And now we had Barista Ekomengongi, for example, taking the case of, of Fako Division, saying that it, it wasn't common in in the 60s to get traditional rulers involved in grabbing lands and selling. And he used the word grabbing land. I begin to ask myself, the land is supposed to be under the K, the traditional K of the, of the traditional ruler, culturally. And he says, traditional rulers of today are so concerned on how to make fast cash that they go into that practice. Do you see also the position of the traditional rulers of today as a problem? Yeah, very true, very true. The issue is that uh, being a prince in a royal palace, I feel that today we have traditional rulers. You know, there is a difference between traditional rulers in the northwest and those in the southwest. And I think what we are talking about is based more of the southwest. Now, in the southwest region, it is very normal to have land grabbing issue. Like I said before, land grabbing is not today. History has it that Southwesterners or funds of the Southwest gave their lands to the Germans. History has it that. The, the, I'm not the, the a historian. Bar the barrister bar says the Germans seized the Bakure lands and did not hand it back to the people. Later on, the government of Cameroon took the lands and did not give it back to the people. The Bakuri Land Commission went as far as Banjul, 
in the Gambia and got the ruling in their favor, came back to Cameroon, and the government of uh, late have been ceding the lands. The unfortunate thing, according to him, is that the lands have been ceded. Normally, to be ceded to the community, the lands were unfortunately ceded to traditional rulers who intended not distribute to their people, but they went ahead selling. The issue is that I'm still saying one thing that when it comes to traditional rulers in the southwest, when it comes to lands, we should be able to say that traditional rulers in the southwest have the monopoly to give land to who they want. And many a time, like I said, I said that there are three chains. There is a traditional ruler, there is the local administrator who is a deal, and there is uh, the, the commissioner or the commander. That's why you go to go to the southwest, do your investigation till you find it. I'm saying it because I've investigated it and I discovered that. In the Southwest, there are divisional officers or senior divisional officers who have left the Southwest with so many plots of land. They did not buy them. It's just you just need to favor a traditional ruler. And once you favor the traditional ruler. What, what kind of favors, for example? Because I got some through uh, Baris Dangongi. What kind of favors, for example, fa do traditionals need from administrators, be they deals or senior divisional officers? <laughs> When I talk about favor, in my investigation I discover favor means that many a time they come, they, they, they just need to bring somebody and win a case. They just need to like say, okay. make the wrong pay, pay persons. That is it. That is it. Yes. No. No. I will not say that. I will not say that. In the, tradi in the Southwest, it's different from the Northwest. In the Southwest, uh, chief tents is more of uh, it's more of kind of a vote. It's more of for me, Armstrong can become a chief tomorrow. But in the northwest where I come from, where I'm a prince, for you to be a traditional ruler, someday I may be a king, I may be a chief. But in the southwest, what I'm talking about, Armstrong, is that yes. in the southwest... Okay. Yes, I think I've gotten you. I wanted to, to go faster because it, you, we, we've also had reports from, of land issues in the west region with customs and traditions similar to those of the Northwest region. But I wanted to talk about the rules of the traditional ruler, to go and talk about the uh, rules of the elite and consequently elected officials, like members of parliament. At the time when people are crying, because we are having this cries from the common people, we are not seeing their mayors and their MPs crying so. No, we, we want to feel that uh, many a time when these things come up, uh, those who are supposed to cry for the people are the elected officials the parliamentarians at the level of the southwest we've seen uh, honorable malombe who has cried for the people and the level of the northwest and especially donga mantun we've seen honorable ngala gerard he's one guy i admire so much he's one of those very vibrant parliamentarians who will not i want to feel that if you took somebody's land illegally and you went to cry to ngala gerard he will tell you no prince that land is not yours and you see to it that the land comes back to you that is why I'm still saying that at the level of the Southwest, I will not want to criticize what is ongoing in the Southwest because this is a chain. It's not a chief. Because when you take a land, I'm strong, it's not you. Once you take the land, there is a commissioner. You go and complain a case. But at the level of the commissioner, the commissioner tell you you don't have a case. And then the All case right. goes to the deal. And it the deal sent it back to the palace. It gets complicated. And uh, the you're, 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 you're bound, you're bound those to crying, say... Those crying, they will not know where to turn to again. You're bound to and say I've lost the case. Uh, just like uh, Barista Ikumengongi, Prince is stating uh, actors in this chain of land grabbing uh, in, all, uh, in, in, the, in different parts of uh, Cameroon. And we are hoping that investigations that have so far been launched through CONAC, by the presidency through CONAC, will be able to establish who are the persons responsible for this illegal and fraudulent uh, land grabbing in all parts of Cameroon. Thanks very much, Prince. It's a privilege being on board with you, Armstrong. A uh, special good evening again to the peace-loving people of the Donga Mountain subdivision and to Honorable Ngala. Donga Mountain Division. Yeah, Division. All right, thanks, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are happy you stayed with us. Stay in the company of inter interesting programs on Equinox Television.